larger than life He'll give you strife He's tall He's tall, he's mean He's labeling the sheet He's tall Rides a motorbike He'll tell you what it's like He's tall Don't know what he'll say He'll scare the kids away He's Todd He's Todd Hey, good morning yet again And um, happy Thursday to you Hope your week's been well um, I just got back from uh, Colorado last week So uh I had the opportunity to go out and uh, make some sales calls. I want to thank Lisa Schwartz with AEM for uh, putting up with me and uh, the other folks that I saw. And I uh, went up to visit my older brother, Sam. I think uh, you saw in the last episode. And um, you know what? I, I got to actually give him a compliment. And, and Sam, this is on record because it's being recorded. But uh, you, know, you did a damn good job with the barbecue. The brisket was fantastic. Uh, the ribs are great, and uh, you know, uh, no Pepto needed, and I, and I had a, a pretty clean ride home on the plane the next morning. So, uh, appreciate the hospitality out there, Sam. Always good to see everybody. Had the opportunity to stop in the brother office. That was kind of a weird experience, but um, uh, everyone's doing well. And so that was a nice little trip, and hopefully, lots more uh, trips to come. And um, oh, there I go with the damn mums again. Uh, so let's see, um, today we have a very special guest and I have been a guest on his show, um, a couple of times and, uh, it's very elusive. He says he's busy all the time, but yeah, I don't know, whatever. Um, um, gosh, I gotta, I gotta stop with the elms. Anyway, uh, Chuck Bowser is here with us today and chuck has been in this industry for well look at him forever and look what this industry does to you right chuck so a couple of things um i'm gonna let uh, chuck uh, talk about himself um here in a second but uh, chuck also kind of does he's got a, he's got a day job like i do uh but chuck does a couple of things and, and i wanted to print this out because i'll forget so chuck uh, is the host of and um has a, a side thing called let's uh, talk cabling podcast. All right. Right, Chuck. All right. Yep. Um, he's available on all podcast outlets and YouTube. And then, uh, he also does, uh, ask Chuck Bowser, RCDD after hours live stream. And, and I've been on a couple of those. Those are Thursdays, 6 PM Eastern on LinkedIn and YouTube. So is that correct? Chuck? That is correct. Fantastic. So Chuck is my special guest today. And I've also got uh, another guest, and, and yeah, the thing is, um, with this next guest, uh, he's been on the show a couple of times. Uh, we've been working together for seven or eight years right now. Um, you know, Jamie, I don't know if you knew or not, um, and it, everyone else knows, but you know, I did take your wife to the Cayman Islands. You know that. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to bring on Mr. Jamie Brook over. He's out there somewhere. Jarvay, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to break the news to you about the Cayman Islands, um, but we, we had a good time. Uh, yeah, I'll be calling her in a little bit to find out, you know, if that's true or not. So, but Todd, uh, 11 ums already and one cuss word. I'm sorry? 11 ums and one cuss word. <laughs> Did I cuss? <sighs> Four All minutes right. in, we got 11 ums. Chuck has a reputation that I do not want to see you take it down, okay? So if you could, like, maybe get it together a little bit, we appreciate it. All right. Well, I'll try and shut the hell up here in a minute. Now, hey, speaking of the Cayman Islands, Jamie, I don't know if you knew this, and I'm going to share this picture with you, but I, I did, I did, uh, uh, and, and I don't know who took this picture of us, uh, but it's a great picture. We were having a good time at this point, but uh, let me bring this up, and uh, let me know. I, I love it. But uh, hey, take a look. Tell me what you think. We were having a moment here. Uh, Kate, if you can, uh, I don't know if you could turn that on. 
don't know if you can see that. There we go. <laughs> there, there's there's me and Jamie in the Cayman Islands, and and so uh, <clears throat> we had a great time. I, you know, I don't know I if we were, we're never going to talk group. about that day ever again. Yeah, there was there was a lot of that going on. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stop this, and um, so anyway, we're back. So what we're what we're talking about today, and obviously HR has. Uh, um, told Jamie to uh, to hop on board and kind of keep track because they're kind of busy these days, is that the whole premise of this BS with Todd is Brother Solutions. And uh, it was kind of interesting when I was in Colorado, I was talking to a couple of customers. Um, and you know, I, I've been in this industry a long time, like Chuck and as, as Jamie. Um, mark that one down, Jamie. Um, I got you. So one of the things that uh, somebody brought up, um, Patrick Johnson, um, he actually called me a cesspool of labeling knowledge. I, should I take that as oh. a compliment? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like it. But anyway, thanks. Thanks, PJ, for that. So the reason why I brought Chuck on today is that, you know, I sit here and I sling this BS, um, you know, every other week and, and it's me talking and. You know, it can be somewhat intimidating and blah, 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 blah. But I want to bring people on that will back up my BS at the end of the day. And uh, Chuck has been in the industry with a long, uh, for a very long time. But before we get into that, um, Chuck, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do, a little bit about your, your podcast. Then we'll talk a little bit about labeling. And then at the end of this, I do have some information. Kate has actually put a slide together where you can contact uh, not only Chuck, uh, myself and uh, Jamie, if you want to, I don't know why you would, but uh, you can contact Jamie if you'd like to. But Chuck, uh, I'm going to give you. I can still hear you, Todd. Oh, Kate, he's still on. <laughs> All right, Chuck, why, why don't you take a second, uh, tell sure. everybody a little bit about yourself, what you do, and then we'll talk a little labeling. Well, I appreciate this opportunity. I'm, I'm now internet famous. I can now put on my resume that I've been on the BS with Todd uh, vlog. And that might give me a whole nother 13 cents on my next job. <laughs> exactly. No, I, my name is Chuck Bowser. I am a RCDD, a Bixie technician and a former Bixie certified trainer. I started off in this industry in 1982. So if you do the math, one carry the one. That means Chuck is old, hence all the gray hair. <laughs> um, I started off like everybody else did. I started off as an apprentice, you know, getting sent out to the truck to get the bucket of dial tone and and uh, the left-handed screwdriver and worked my way up through the ranks. I've held positions such as uh, apprentice, technician, project manager, estimator, division estimator, uh, area manager, safety officer. I now am a, an instructor for a large connectivity manufacturer as my day job. And then as I realized that as I'm in the fall of my career, as I was going to these Bixie conferences, as you and I were just talking about just a couple minutes ago, there's a lot of old guys there. And we really need to inspire to get some youth into our industry. So I've always made it video content and a podcast. I actually have another one, too, called this, um, The Bowser Journal about homesteading. And uh, my wife says, why don't you just do one about cabling? So we did one about cabling. And uh, that, that one's it's really the, the motto of the channel is to connect at the human level so we can connect the world. And it's all about teaching people anything and everything. I'm, I'm an open book. That's what the whole after hours on Thursday is about. It's just a I open it up, you send me questions, and I answer them live. And most of the time, I get them right. <laughs> Every once in a while, there's you, you get with a, a question that I thought was right, and then I go back and research and find out, oops, that was not quite so right. Because you know, our industry is kind of confusing. There's four ways you can answer any question, right? You can answer the way you were taught, which may or may not be right. What does the code book say about that? Which we know what that means. What do the standards say? And what do technical documents like the Bixie TDMM or the ITSA manual say? And quite often, they rarely match. And uh, so I, I'm trying to help you know, shed a light on this for everybody who wants to come to this industry and, and just make it look. I want to leave the industry better than the way I found it. That's my whole goal. Well, you know, Chuck, you, uh, I've, I've watched some of your episodes as well as, um, again, th uh, I thank you for bringing me on uh, to talk about labeling. And obviously, this whole industry has changed. Um, <clears throat> Jamie, I know you're marking that damn 
one that I'm down again. But the whole industry has changed um, significantly since uh, my time in the business. And I think I got in at 96. In fact, you're, you're kind of the Methuselah of, of this industry, if you will. Um, so you know, with that being said, part of what we do within the industry is labeling. And labeling itself has come a long way. Uh, again, I can remember, and this is actually one of the printers I used to use out in the field. Chuck, that looks familiar to you, right? Yes, we, it does. We all remember, yeah, number one, using Sharpies, right? Number two is A01 space, 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 A02 space, 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 so forth yep. and whatnot. Uh, this actually still works. This is from 1999, I believe. And this thing actually works. And we use the old M labels, the M series of brother labels, which is a paper label. It is not allowed. Well, actually, you know what? I take it back. It is allowed. It's not recommended, all right? Because as the standards say, 606C, all labels must be printed with a mechanical device. Is this considered a mechanical device? Absolutely. Does it use the right tape? No, it does not. What about so, a Sharpie with a, with, a, with a clicker? Is that mechanical? Um, not, not, no, no, that's not even a great To Todd it is, for Todd it is. I get asked that question in class all the time. I think I have one of those around here somewhere. Uh, you know what we did, uh, you watched my, um, Bixie, uh, 606 uh, data center, uh, I believe it was last week, Chuck, and we talked about Sharpies, and Sharpie is a gray area. You can still use Sharpie on your rough ends, write it on, I can write it on the box, write it on the cable. Uh, that can be used for rough ends, and I, I threw in a trick question at the end of that, which actually most people got wrong, uh, but nonetheless, things have developed as far as labeling. And, you know, you got things like liability, you have things like additional labor hours, you have all these different attributes and margins aren't what they used to be within the industry. So right. for it's like to go back out and fix errors in labeling, it can be very costly. So one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why I brought Chuck on today is to discuss the attributes and the pluses of a properly labeled infrastructure and then some of the downfalls if you don't do it right with labels falling off and yeah i'm not going to go any further uh but chuck if you would take a couple of minutes and let's talk about the pluses of a properly labeled infrastructure so there's advantages at all different levels whether you're the rcdd or the project manager or even the the technician right let's and i like how i like how you pointed out that if, if it's not labeled right, you got to go back and fix it. A lot of people don't understand the true cost of when you're having to go back to fix something because now you're going back to fix something and you're supposed to be somewhere else making revenue for the company and you're losing potential sales there and you're losing customer confidence. So it's not just a matter of just you know, rolling the truck and paying a technician. You're losing customer confidence, which could cost you a you know, job down the down the road. And, and I love, love that you pointed out Sharpies because – when I first got in this this field, that's all we used. We used to write Sharpies on the front of the faceplates. And the problem is you rub a desk against it, it gets smudged. If, if it's a faceplate out in the warehouse or something, guess what? You, you are here, UV damage? You could even read it. And so there's, there's for a technician, you, you don't want to go back to a job and have to replace something. And, and that's why as a technician, you know, pro tip number one, if you're labeling patch panels, make sure that patch panel is clean. Right, because here's what happens quite often is we install the patch panels during construction. They, they, they when they get done, the GC will do a general dust and clean, which stirs up all kinds of dust. And then if you put a label on that patch panel, you didn't just take a you know 15 seconds just to wipe it off with you know get that small layer of dust, which may not even be visible, right? And then what's going to happen is you know three months down the road, six months down the road, half of those labels are off the patch panel, and now you got to go back out there again and 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 relabel them. That's and I don't know about you, but I don't have enough time on my day to do the same task twice. I, I just don't, right? Yep. And uh, so, you know, from a, from a project management standpoint, from a project manager standpoint, you know, the advantage of a good labeling system is now he knows when he dispatches anybody back out there to do a service call, like it may not be a, a service tech who might not even been on the original project. If they follow the standards on how they're supposed to be labeled, it's pretty clear cut, you know, 
this this is in rack number whatever and rack mount unit number whatever and it's port number one it doesn't matter if they were part of that install or not and that makes that person more efficient so as a project manager when you're judged by you know how quick you can get something done can you do it under budget and if you haven't sent a service tech because something went wrong you don't want that huge dollar value to get charged back to your project so you know just those small little steps like that is, is going to give you all kinds of advantages and the, the customer advantage right if something's labeled right then they know that they can plug it in and it's just it's just going to work and there's confidence there and that's and that's what you want you want to come from a customer that's confident with you customers don't always pick the cheapest contractor they do a lot but not always um, I remember as a project manager, when I left one company, went to another company, three of my customers followed me to my new company because they liked the way that I did the work. And that's what I'm saying. If you can inspire that, that, that confidence within a customer, there's your advantage right there. And it's the, it's the, it's the small details. Everybody knows how to pull cable and support it. It's, it's the labeling is what gets forgot. It's, it, it's just, well, let's just label it by the room numbers. Let's label it by, you know, the, 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 I love when the customers come up with their own numbering sequence, right? This is cable number 39. If the moon, if it's a full blood moon and a waxing crescent in an odd number year, what can, can, can you explain that one to me again? <laughs> right. Well, that's the importance of, uh, again, you know, ANSI TIA 606 C. And as we, as I talked about my, uh, my Bixie presentation last week, um, the, the whole idea of that is so everybody follows the same cadence. And when, when I go to these sites, and it still exists to these days, you have an IT director, like you just said, that has developed their own labeling scheme and may not have the records for it, and it's in their head, and it can only be cipherized by that particular individual. And, and if that individual leaves, that knowledge goes with them. Right. So I see it all the time. And so that is the importance of following 606C standards. Not only does it outline how you should label it according to the port position, the rack position, the cable ID, um, but, you know, how, how what to use, um, it, it guidelines uh, the, as far as the mechanical devices, what to label, what doesn't need to be labeled in there? Right. Uh, all of that is in 606C and part of what you teach out there, obviously, Chuck, uh, with your RCDD, uh, is is 606C. That's a part of it. It's a small right. part of it. But uh, going back to what you said, is labeling really didn't used to be uh, such a big deal. Right? right. Now it is. And one of the things that I was really stressing last week was liability liability all right so if you have could be a cable could be a fiber could be uh, an active or passive electronics if it's labeled wrong guess who they're going to come back to on a failure and so it, again it's very important to be diligent di diligent <laughs> that, that, that diligent they got me okay? um, somebody so, document that please that wasn't on purpose Diligent was not on purpose, by the way. Let me throw um, another layer on that, Todd. What if you have what if, what if you have a bank, right? And yeah. you're running a cable in the data center, and you accidentally somehow knock a cable out because you're running a fish tape. And don't ask me how I know this story, by the way. Um, and you accidentally disconnect that cable, and now that bank can't communicate with any of its ATMs nationwide. How much do you think that back charge is going to be? Because you having to tone it out, and figure out where it went if it wasn't labeled right. And I'm telling you, and, and again, what, I, what I'm starting to preach more and more is asset management. And it, it's fine to put alphanumeric on the label, but a lot of what I'm trying to teach people and get people to do is put some type of asset management on there that further protects your butt, if you will. Uh, things like QR codes. QR I'm codes. really excited about your QR codes. I really am. Because... Now you don't have to worry about trying to put 17 letters underneath one little thing. You can just take the picture with your phone. Here's the, here's the challenge that you're going to have with that. Old people like you and me. The, the young people, the young technicians, they got it down pat. Us old folks, sometimes, hey, look, I'm going to show you just how, how old school I am. I still do things with a notebook. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah. old school I am. Yeah, like I said, Methuselah. No, you, you know what? But there's a new guard and and uh, coming up within the industry, Chuck. And and yep. us old farts are 
you know, we're, we're, we're slowly fading out uh, gracefully, uh, I should say. But I, I think that that is the future. And what I'm trying to do is plant seeds for that future. Yes. And, and all these damn smart devices, um, yep. you know, they can all read QR codes. And you can buy QR code readers. Let's say you're in a data center and you can't use these devices. You can't bring a radio device in. I saw the coolest barcode reader the other day, QR code reader that has a little screen. So as you shoot this QR code, it's got a little screen telling you the information. And, you know, it's under 100 bucks. So, yeah. you know, something like that inside of an installation that can't have any Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Again, there's solutions out there for it. And as this, these young bucks come into the industry, everything's about this. You know, all right. of our labeling devices and, and everything we do, it, it's all automated. And so, again, all I'm trying to do is, is plant some seeds. And it's us old farts out there that, that are trying to get these seeds to grow, right. if you will. And, again, labeling is, is a huge part of not only the identification process, it's going to save labor at the end of the day because you don't have to go out and, and do it. the old, uh, you know, tone probe, the wand, the whole nine yards. Uh, if you do it right, the, the only time you should go back to that customer is when they're paying you for Mac work, not to fix labeling right. or to uh, pick labeling or labels off the ground that have fallen off because they can't withstand the environments. And yep. the data centers, woo, Chuck, you know, they yes. run hot and sometimes they run cold. Well, here's the good thing, right? And and, and the injury is getting. I, I wonder if this is actually COVID related or not. And that I don't know the answer to. But you know, if if you plant the seed, well, I'm going to water that seed because I'm giving the same message. Blake, I saw him post here in, in the comment. He's in there. He's low voltage nation. I know he's in the same. He's the same uh, main same brain set. There you go. There's a Chuckism right there. See, I'm trying to be like Todd. <laughs> um, and if enough people water that seed, it'll that that plant will grow, and we will get people realizing that labeling is not an afterthought. It is it is the second most important thing that you can do on a job site. Uh, you know what? I, I couldn't agree with. I'll take number two. That, that that's fine. I'll take number two. Um, <clears throat> Jamie, mark that damn um down again. So speaking of Blake, Blake, I see you out there. Uh, huge fan of Blake, Hermos, and Low Voltage Nation. Um, huge fan of, of Chuck. Uh, Chuck, I, I want to thank you today uh, for coming on board, and uh, we're, we're going to uh, we're going to run through a couple things uh, towards the end of this. Um, Jamie, don't mark that other um. I did that on purpose, but uh, Chuck, I appreciate it. Everybody, um, please pay to uh, pay attention to the end of the show. Uh, give Chuck some love with his uh, after hours. And let's talk cabling, if you will. But Chuck, I want to thank you very much for coming on board today. And uh, I want to hear My that pleasure. story from the bank. So we'll, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Well, Jamie? No? 30, 32 ums, three cuss words, one almost cuss word. And everyone wants to know the definition of sight for eyes. Cypherize. It means it's, it's it's simple. It means figuring it out. Yeah, how do you cipher this? And so cypherize is the process of ciphering. I'm sorry, deciphering. All right. So let me digress. So anyway, that's what it is for for everyone out there. And I'm surprised nobody has heard that that uh, that term before. I, I googled it. It didn't show up. I might have misspelled it. I don't know, but it's. I'm just letting you know. So. Um, yeah, and I was trying to figure out that I heard you got on um, you got on his uh, Chuck's After Hours um, podcast, but you stopped working at like one or one thirty. So does he come on like mid afternoon for you or something? Or I mean, how's that work? Uh, all right, Kate. <laughs> Bye, Jamie. Thirty-two times. So I, I did see something in the comments um, about new product, and so I, I, I want to talk a little bit about new product. We have some exciting stuff coming up. Uh, we we have done, and the ums don't count from here on out, Jamie, because this is something different. So, um, damn it! Here's a here's a little preview, folks. So we talked about some of the stuff in the past as far as our new Titan printers. And our new TD printers, and those are primarily uh, direct thermal and thermal transfer 
the, the one area that we've been kind of lacking in, and I'm going to show you a little preview of what I'm talking about. And this product will be available. I uh, give it 60 to 90 days, but I did have the opportunity to take this out to Arizona and show a customer ahead of time. And uh, they, they were loving it. So here is an example of some of the stuff that we're going to be able to print. It's pretty exciting. Now our competitors in this industry uh, have basically owned this market for years and years, but things like this, isn't that cool? So stay tuned. These are brother products. I'm really excited about it. It's starting to uh, gather some buzz out there. So uh, stay tuned. I don't have uh, any information as far as part numbers and blah, 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 blah. But I am very excited about this particular project because it gets us into areas that we really haven't been in for some time. So with that being said, uh, Kate, uh, stay tuned for the new products. Kate, if you could, uh, let's show some slides. Upcoming session. So next session is Ask Todd Anything. And I do mean anything. Uh, so if you could uh, send your respective questions uh, either my way. Of course, if you send them my way, I'm going to know what they are. Uh, we're going to show you the contact information for everybody else out there. But think of some questions you want to ask me, and I'll answer anything. I won't hold back. Uh, I don't care if it's industry related or not. So ask Todd anything. Hopefully it is industry related. Uh, hopefully it's about labeling. If not, then I do know, again, I'm a cesspool of knowledge, not only on the labeling side, but when it comes to a low voltage as well. June 3rd, I put a TBD up there only because we have a couple of options and I'm waiting on some answers right now. Uh, so that way we can put that up there. So let's go to the next slide, Kate. Ah, there's, there's Chuck. All right, so here's Chuck's information. Uh, Chuck is a good dude, man, and he's got some really good information out there, and it's fresh information. Uh, he, he teaches RCDD. Uh, he knows what he's doing. So if you get the opportunity, check out Chuck. Uh, Kate, let's go to the uh, contact. How to contact the brother team. Obviously, uh, I'm here in San Diego County. You got Mr. J Jamie Brookover. Thanks again, Jamie, for hopping on this morning. You got Mr. Jamie Brookover in Virginia Beach. You got Mr. Dan Cobb somewhere in uh, Wisconsin. Mr. Bruce Page in uh, Marble Mouth, uh, uh, Massachusetts, Marble Head. Marble, Marble, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, Bruce is out there if you need him. Mr. Rob Dawkins in North Carolina and our glorious leader, Mr. Craig Robinson, who hails out of Sarasota, Florida, Bradenton, somewhere there. Anyways, in Florida. With that being said, I'm going to end this a uh, couple minutes early because I've got to hop on another call, believe it or not. I, I also work for a living. So I'm going to hop on another call. I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 real quick. Huh? What do you think? The new shirts are here. I forgot last week. I forgot last week, but uh, here's the front. And even though I look like the dad, Carlton's dad from uh, the Fresh Prince on the front, it's still a good likeness, but I do like this. So the Let's Talk, uh, uh, the BS with Todd shirts are available. Hit up your uh, rep if you'd uh, like a shirt. Uh, we'd love for you to promote the show out there. So the shirts are available. We've got a couple of the different designs we're going to do. Thank you, Angie Palmer, and everybody else for getting that done. Uh, thank you, Kelly, Kate. Um, with that being said, uh, 1028, I'm out of here. Have a great week. Please tune in next week. Uh, I'm sorry, in two weeks uh, for that show, the Ask Todd Anything show. This should be a fun show. And uh, if you need anything in the meantime, please reach out, and um, one of us will get back to you soon. So have a very blessed week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.